Being a professional golfer doesn't just come to you. It takes years of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. One big factor that goes into becoming a professional is taking many years of lessons from your teacher, instructor, or putting in all the hard work yourself so you are able to perfect your craft. This is where Michael Smith of the Daniel Allen Club comes in. So the first question I have is, what year did you become a PGA professional and where did you complete your certification? I uh, started in 1992 as a card attendant. And by year collected, was maybe 2002, I would have to look that, on my, look that up on my card. I had a, a stint in between where I played professionally, so I had to re start the program. So I was almost done with the program in ninety mid 90s and then uh, played for a year and a half and uh, had an injury and got back into the program and had to start all over. So it took me like seven years. So yeah, about 2010. Okay. And so after you became PJ certified, what made you want to become a teaching professional or was this the path you always wanted to follow? And how long have you been teaching? Uh, I've been teaching actually since my first job as, a, as an assistant where I graduated from Carton Barnes to be an assistant. And, uh, and yeah, I've been enjoying teaching. And I don't, uh, not that I dislike management, but I just enjoy working and growing the game one person at a time or one group at a time. It's just uh, more my style. It's definitely and, less stressful, I'll tell you that. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and you know, it, yeah, you kind of create your own hours. I just I enjoy watching people get better. And, uh, that was a, that's a good uh, lead into the next question. What's your goal when you're with your uh, t your students, I guess you can call them? Uh, to get them to enjoy the game, depending on their level, um, uh, to keep their expectations in check. <laughs> you know, it's a hard game, so... Uh, uh, you know, whether you're a brand new golfer or uh, you know a college golfer or what have you, that um, just try to get people to where they want to be as, as easily as possible. Now, uh, just take me through like a typical lesson with any of your students, and like explain what you do with them. It, just basic stuff. It doesn't have to be a okay, certain person. Okay, so um, I, I, over the years. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's so many parts of the golf swing that, you know, people read about. I mean, you've got anything from older deviation to whatever that's on the internet now. So, last couple of years, I, I developed a way for me to better not confuse people, <laughs> to give them small chunks, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, I want to go through and I like to get hand position, club face position, good, to start with, because that's what we hit the ball with. Um, you know, obviously you want to get into a grip, aim, set up is the first thing you do, teaching a, a golfer how to align yourself correctly to the target, where to position the ball. And then from there, I'm looking at a foundation, which is your legs down, I'm looking at your, your spine angle or your axis, which is a face on and down the line view. And I'm looking at the circle you make. So within those four areas, you, you figure out what's good, what's not so good, and what area you might could tackle first to help the other three and that's kind of you know if you can't hold the club good and get the club square then it's going to be hard to to do the rest of it and so i see your setup over here is pretty simple you have like a computer for the student to look at and you have an ipad for yourself what exactly how do you use those um to, well, their, to their advantage early on i'll give you a two second story i was at wild dunes <laughs> teaching and we didn't have uh, camera equipment at the time it was people were using it but uh, very very small percentage mm -hmm. so i'm giving this gentleman a lesson and he's over swinging i mean really bad and uh, and every time he'd over swing i said no nah, it's still a little bit long and he got mad at me and left the lesson so had i had my ipad or a camera uh -huh. at the time which i started using probably about 15 years ago we used uh, uh software which was uh harder now with an ipad it makes it simple so now i can uh get a, a person postured correctly so they can look in the screen and see themselves uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people feel like they're sticking their butt out too much well they look in the camera and they go wow that looks kind of normal and uh for me uh drawing lines and circles and, and uh, you know I can, basically we read a ball flight and then mm -hmm. this helps you understand why the ball flight is doing what it's doing so i, I don't enjoy 
teaching with it anymore without it anymore because I need it to do slow motion look. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's good stuff. I, I enjoy using it. I know it's helped you out. I mean, oh, it definitely helps me out. And now that I put the, the iPad back there and you can see yourself mm -hmm. making motions, then it, it, it kind of makes it easier to feel where you're supposed to be instead of shooting a video, then looking at it and going, mm -hmm. that's not it. Shoot another video, that's not it. So if you continue, it's like it's like looking at a mirror down the line, which is mm -hmm. very nice. And so last question I have for you is, what is the most rewarding thing that you've seen since being an instructor, I guess, that you'd like to see or have seen? I, I just, it doesn't have to be major, just something no, just, small. I just like, I mean, watching people get better, whether they've won the third flight, uh, you know, of the, of the tournament here at the club, or, or they have um, won a junior event. And that's that's the whole goal. Again, that the goal is to get people to want to play, to get out and have fun, and keep, keep playing golf. That's the whole objective. 